Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you for watching again. And if you're new, my name is Lauren, and this is Lauren Speaks. Do you find that you are frustrated because you can't go forward in your career, or you currently can and find a job? Well, the good news is that God cares, and He has different things that He wants to let you know. And listen to this video because maybe He just may trying to help you be humble okay so let's talk about it okay so go with me because it's a mini bible study and we're going to go to philippians chapter 2 and i'm reading on my phone the nlt version and the title of this section is called have the attitude of christ lord i pray you join us cover us with the blood take care of us and help us to be humble and hear what you have to say <laughs> in Jesus name amen okay hmm let's start with let's start with verse one actually because you need to hear the whole thing is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ any comfort from his love any fellowship together in the spirit are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. Before I go on, just let you know this is Paul talking to the Philippian church. Verse 3. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of your others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Okay. Why did we read that scripture? That's a good question. I feel during my quiet time, the Lord, he read me, he led me to this chapter of Philippians 2. Now, if we're supposed to be beliefs in Christ, Christians, we are supposed to become more and more like him every day. So sometimes God kind of puts us or takes us to the side, let's say it like that, to get our attitude correct. You know, because we think we're ready to go out and fight. We think we're ready to be a part of life. We think we've got all the control, but God sees all the inner turmoil on here and here. He sees your soul. And sometimes, believe it or not, God will take you to the side and have you sit out. Because he says, I need to deal with you. Remember, every time we wake up in the morning and is particularly go outside of this house, we are Christ's representatives. So this means there's no hiding. Even if we don't mention it, people can tell and they should be able to tell that you're different, that you must be a Christian. Sometimes God will have you witness out loud, and sometimes he'll have you keep it quiet because he wants them to just see your light, okay? But if you're not humble, and more often than not, people see you as very competitive, prideful, you willing to do whatever it takes to win, and you're just a know-it-all, and you think you deserve it all, too. Don't think that God isn't watching that and uh, he doesn't want to deal with you about it. And sometimes he doesn't let you just continue working. There's times when he wants to sit you 
down and talk with you. Because we make God look bad by our behavior when we misrepresent him. And you never know who's watching you and wondering about God. You know, we're supposed to be a light to the lost. And we don't live for people, we live for God. But Jesus came down himself to set an example as he lived completely submitted to the Father. And we ourselves are supposed to be submitted to Jesus Christ. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But how can we really, if he can't find us being humble? And humble doesn't have to be this weird image that society predict, um, projects. Um, scared, quiet, alone, pushover. Let me let you know that Jesus, if you read the Gospels, was no pushover. He knew when to stand up for himself and he knew when to withdraw. He didn't put his faith in man or money or fame. He put it in God, the Father who sent him. He gave up his life on the cross for you and me. That's very humbling. Maybe the most humbling any humbling thing anyone can ever do. That God took off his holiness. I don't want to say holiness. His holy robes and came down as a human being in this filthy flesh full of sin and decided to be amongst man to show him what living holy really meant and he faced every temptation and did it sin once God is calling us to mature in Christ he's calling us to do that but we gotta be willing to work with him. So what does humility look like? Well, sometimes you gotta be willing to not have all the attention on you. Maybe you are always wanting that attention. Maybe you feel like you deserve those accolades. Maybe you just feel like you deserve the promotion and you, you, you know, you, gotta, um, you, you hate or you envy somebody who took it from you right we don't know the situation but we we all feel different things right and you're angry at god because you feel like you should be further ahead or you're angry at god because you're not working yet you feel that you know better but remember that the bible says that god's thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his ways are higher than our ways god will never do you wrong he knows what's best Okay? He always knows what's best. So even when I myself get angry about something and I'm like, God, why did you allow that? I also have the number to step back and say to him, Lord, I know you think different and you think higher than me. So you know why you allowed that? But I just asked you to help me to understand. Can you help me see it through your eyes as to why you're allowing these things to happen? And he has answered me. And not every single time is he going to answer you right away. Sometimes he wants to have you continue to come to him and see that you can see these things in his face. Because he, remember, he wants that relationship with you. He does not want to just be this genie. He's not a genie. Nothing like it. So, how do we practice humility? Well, what did Paul say? by learning to put others before ourselves by not always being in our own head and thinking about what's best for us maybe God allowed that person to get promotion over you to show that it's not all about you I know this whole thing with being the main character in your life is going around but honestly it could lead into an area that we don't want to go into as believers in Christ because that's not how he wants us to live always saying it like this is my world this is my life this is god's world and he has asked you as a believer to surrender your life to christ and make your life about him and his will for you and no you will not be miserable but you have the best time ever in your life following jesus way and doing his will 
So as we see, he's asking the believers in the church of the Philippians to be there for each other and support each other. And, you know, sometimes we think I'm there for other people. Yeah, but what about in your heart? What if every time they they say something great, like you feel like that could be me or I could do that better or I deserve that or, you know, you just don't know. You don't know why God allows the people to have what you consider to be success over you sometimes. Maybe it's a blessing in disguise. Maybe you didn't need that promotion because it would have been too much for you. You thought you could handle it, but God knows the truth. And he's like, you don't need it, trust me. You don't need it. Sometimes that can happen where he will allow you to get what you want. And then you'll be humbled by realizing, you know what, I didn't need all that. You know? So don't think that God doesn't know what he's doing. And don't think that he's against you. He's trying to make you more like his son. And yeah, our flesh does not like that process, but that's why we are to work out our salvation daily and with fear and trembling because we serve a holy God. So if he takes you out of work unexpectedly or unexpectedly you get laid off or you find yourself unemployed for over a year, you know, go to God. Lord, what are you trying to teach me? That's humbling yourself right there. That's humbling yourself right there. Lord, I'm looking to you. He wants you to remember that he is your source. He is your everything. And every time you got a check, that was his money. Every time you got hired by a company, he was over that company. Every time you had favor with a boss, that was him giving you favor. Every time you made a good front of job, that was him allowing them to be good to you. Everything goes back to God. Every good and great gift, as the Bible says, comes down from the Father of Lights, and that's Jesus. So it's time to thank Him during this time, this time out, and to understand, try to understand why and what He's trying to teach you. I thank you so much for watching this video. Please continue to go on for the study of the rest of Philippians 2 because it was really good and it talks about what we're expected to do in the faith. And I'll be back with you, brothers and sisters, to talk about more of what God expects of us as Christians and how we can go ahead and attain the wealth and the life that God has for us. Because so that he dies, that we can have the abundant life. And, you know, he wishes great things for you. And the Bible says, I wish above all things that you may be prosperous and in good health just as your soul prospers and that was all and guess what guys i'm wishing that and i'm praying it over you in jesus name i'll see you next time